Greetings all, this is Harry Nick. And this is a less Harry Justin. And you're living life on a jaunty angle. I'm living life on a jaunty angle. Yes, it is Australia Thursday or America like afternoon Wednesday. So it's time for a new X-Wing article about some new stuff that we'll be getting in the not too distant future. Uh, this is what? late October they were talking about or early November yeah so this was coming out the same time as the Thai Brute yes this is wave seven and a half I want to say this will be at the same time as the Thai Brute we are getting uh, what the G the droid gunship and the LAAT gunship uh, tomorrow our time or Thursday let's just say to make it yep. easy for everyone out there uh, but first of all let's talk about this new resistance pack now we've got one article uh, that actually covers basically all the new stuff for the A-Wing and the X-Wing. Now, a lot of the stuff we've seen in this article we actually um, have seen before because of the announcements made at Gen Con, so I'll just quickly have a look here. We did have Merle, uh, Poe Dameron, and Temin Wexley all revealed, Merle being this great, like, squirrely one-initiative A-Wing. Uh, that basically replaces the role that a lot of the uh, Initiative 1 generics have been doing so far which is cool to get like a named pilot in that kind of role. And Poe and Temin are kind of like the previous versions of themselves, but more focused on squad flying. Um, yeah. I think building a squad around these two pilots is going to be very, very powerful. Um, but we're not going to go through them again because we already have. We have new pilots to talk about. Uh, one Indeed. from each ship. No, we've got a few A-wings actually. So let's start hmm. off with the new X-wing pilot we have here. Aya Thernali. That's how I think it's pronounced, and that's what I'm sticking with. Uh, initiative oh, 4. Fair enough. After you fully execute a maneuver, if you have moved through a friendly ship, you may perform an evade action. Um, that ooh. Maybe once or twice a game? Yeah. Maybe more? Uh, I guess. It doesn't seem like something that you specifically fly around. Like, you don't actively go for this kind of strategy. It's like um, those annoying situations where you have the lower initiative ship in the back and the high initiative ship in the front, and they're just constantly mm. doing this, and you just are getting so frustrated because you can't separate them. Um, so if you fly this with Poe or Snap, and you fly us behind them, yeah, and like you do like leapfrog stuff, or, or, uh, you, or you fly a low initiative ship first and fly it through it. Either way, you have to do this. Like, this is... What we're talking about here is, like, the best way to manufacture it, which I'm always looking at when we look at new pilot abilities. I don't know if the payoff's that good. What really bothers me about this, like, in a situation where you're flying this, like, behind Poe Dameron, and you're doing that leapfrog-style thing where you're moving in formation, um, yeah, your worst ship gets an evade token. Okay... Yeah. Yeah, Poe Dameron is the one that's going to get shot, not this one. <laughs> yeah, and, like, it's only a two-dice defense, so... That's true. That's true. Um, uh, you're still like, likely to get use out of it, but it's not It's not great. I feel like this would be, like, broken... Well, more broken on an A-Wing. Uh, yes. Yeah, I, I'd agree with that, actually. I think it'd be much better on an A-Wing. Um, they just have more... Uh, they've got a better dial apart from anything else. Yeah. It is maneuvers. It doesn't count like bow rolls or boosts, which is very relevant because we had um, the overdrive thrusters, which can allow uh, boosts and bow rolls to be done with a two-speed maneuver. Mm. It doesn't work with that. It must specifically be maneuvers. I, eh, I don't like it. Uh, that's where I'm at with this one. I don't want to be yeah. a downer, but um, let's move over to these A-wing pilots that we haven't seen yet. Uh, now, just quickly, I'm just going to remind everyone. We are actually going to be getting 10 X-Wing ship cards and 6 A-Wing cards in this oh, pack. So there's, there's definitely there more is, to see. Yeah. There is a huge amount in this pack. It's going to be a lot of fun. Well, we're going to get the generics of each. So that makes up, what, two of each, I think? But there's yeah, yeah. there's still there's more unique parts that we haven't seen yet. So don't lose hope just yet. I mean, maybe there will be another article for this. It just doesn't seem very likely. Mm. Um in no particular order, let's have a look at Sefton Vanek. Sefton Vanek. This is another Initiative 5 A-Wing. Just seem yeah. to get all of them in Initiative 5. Mm -hmm. After you perform a boost action, you may transfer one evade token 
to a friendly ship at range one. Yeah, uh, I'm cool with that. This is going to be a pretty good wingmate, as it literally says on the card. It's a skillful wingmate. That's it. Um, yeah, giving evade tokens to things that couldn't otherwise get them, but apart from the X-Wing pilot we just saw, which is not that exciting, this feels like it's a bit easier to manufacture. So you can give evade tokens to, like, Poe and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, Poe no longer has to take things like Debris Gambit and all that kind of thing. Um, there's literally another ship feeding it while Poe is free to do other actions. Well, especially considering we're talking about a card later on in this pack, this might be really good with Poe. Yeah. Oh, I completely agree. Mm. Um, yeah, it just seems really, really solid. Now, the one caveat, the one sort of bummer about this card is, yes, you literally have to do these actions in this order, except when you have a transport coordinating it. That's the one way you can sort of... Um, no, yeah. Uh, you can get evades onto this. Otherwise, if you don't run a transport with this, you literally have to evade boost in that order, which doesn't matter. But anyway, um, you evade boost in that order and then you can do this. Otherwise, there's no other way to use it. If you have a transport, you can coordinate it, get an evade on it, and then you can uh, boost rotate or any other action then boost. There are other ways of doing it, mm. um, which makes sense. I like um, the focus shifting towards like these junkyard builds i think that's kind of cool uh, i think uh, it's very much the resistance sort of style of play that they're going to be going into yeah but like a more flashier version of junkyard let's mm. hope it actually pans out uh moving over to an initiative three a wing this is suralinda javos harvos i don't know oh, I, I, I like I, harvos now harvos. I, I, as, soon, as soon as you said it i'm like no, that's it. Let's, it's let's give it a Mediterranean flair. I like that. Yeah. After you partially execute a maneuver, you may gain a strain token to rotate 90 or 180 degrees. So basically put it on any cardinal bearing, uh, which is really, really cool. And it's going to be partial. Again, like flying in formation, you can bump into your own ships, which is pretty cool. I don't think it's mm. bad. Uh, and it gives um, it gives more power to things like Predator and Marksmanship if you can... Uh, better sort of point this at other ships although it's only initiative three so it could be awkward it could be awesome also what's happening with that picture yeah it's a bit cool looking isn't it why are they flying that, that... through a vortex <laughs> well i was thinking that they're flying through some sort of like shielding it kind of reminds me of the shield gate on scarif um, a little bit now apparently this pilot was not... in one of the Resistance comics, I believe. So that uh, might be the yeah. I'm sure they all are, man. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it, yeah. That that's a that's a whole discussion about. Oh, <laughs> this this one comes from page three of Poe Dameron. It, it, they sneeze <laughs> slightly, and now there's a backstory because Star Wars. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah. Yeah. It seems pretty cool. Lots of new A-wing pilots. Is that the only ones? No, we have one more. We <laughs> have Roby Tice. Roby Tice, dynamic uh, tyke? aerialist. I, I like Tyke. Initiative four. After you defend at attack range one, at attack range one. Oh, I see. So you could be physically at range one, but attack range two. That is possible. Okay. So after you defend at attack range one, if the attacker modified its dice, the attacker gains a deplete token. Uh. That's weird. Yeah. So, because they're getting a deplete token after they attack, so you don't get immediate value off of it. Um, if they're using a focus token, they can just hold it for defense, which doesn't feel like you're getting much value out of it. I mean, you're changing your opponent's behavior. I, I guess that's pretty good. Ah, mm. um, oh, Justin, they're using deplete tokens again for things that just don't wow me. Yeah. FFG, come on. <laughs> It's mm. it's cool, but like it relies on things that your opponent has choice over, and that's that doesn't it never really excites me. It's nah. interesting. I mean, if it's cheap enough, and you're gonna take like another A wing anyway, that was yeah. I, I mean, mean why this... would you? You you have so many named pilots with the A wings. It's just yeah. Yeah, there's so many initiative five A wings. 
that Indeed. have good abilities that Indeed. you want to be using. If, if I don't it's significantly know. cheaper, hey, it's the incidental upside. It just it doesn't wow me. It just because it takes a turn of setup, which your opponent can just do a blue maneuver. Which they might it might not be ideal, but it's situational. It relies on what your opponent's doing. So, meh is my response to this. Yeah. Um, just before we move on from the pilots, yes, we're having that discussion. Oh, yeah, resistance is getting more initiative five, a wing pilots. I just want to say I really don't think that's a bad thing. It's just no. at the end of the day, it's more choices. Yeah, that not like they can take all. Well, maybe they can fit all their initiative five pilots in one list, but. It's just changing what people are choosing to do. I think so long as the pilot abilities are simple enough so that at the start of a game, if you have a look at your opponent's list, you go, oh, I can understand what that is without having sort of reread it over and over again. It's fine. Um, as a non-resistance player, predominantly myself, I don't care if I keep flying against stuff I've never flown against before. It doesn't bother me so long as it's simple enough to understand. So. Yeah. Just because yeah. something's a junkyard build doesn't mean that all junkyards are the same. Yeah, absolutely. Now, if there were like three or four A-Wings with like a paragraph of text that was really hard to understand every game, yes, I would start to get a bit annoyed. Um, but as it stands, I don't mind that they're making more X-Wings and A-Wings. Frankly, I think they need to be making more X-Wings and Y-Wings on the Rebellion. <laughs> that's, a, that's the one thing that's sort of missing out. Oh, and TIE Fighters as well. Yeah, that'd be really cool. Okay, let's have a look at these Astromechs and... I want to talk about R2-D2 here because... R2 upset to. Yeah, I'm really not a fan of this kind of design. I just think it's a couple degrees too complex. Uh, you don't agree? That's that's fine. Yeah. Um, I don't like that this is something they've done with an iconic character. Um, hey, let's read through the card first. Four charges. Uh, during the end phase, you may spend a charge and a shield token to remove a red token. During the end phase... Same again. Um, if you have no active shields, you may spend two charges to recover a shield and gain a deplete token. And I just think that's a bit too much. The problem I have, like what I was just talking about, where you sit opposite a list when you're a newer player or you just haven't flown against much resistance stuff, I, I go look at that across the table and I think, okay, so he can remove red tokens, but he can also get shields back, but he, can, he gets a deplete. Um, spends char there's four charges but one of them spends one one of them spends two like trying to quantify it all in my head I've already forgotten like the first half of as I'm trying to work it out and I just, I just think especially for new players um, one of the things which is a really bad experience for new players like um, a negative play experience uh, is when uh, a really talented player plays against them and they use something very complicated that the new player just can't get their head around. And they're just constantly doing it over and over again. That was a big problem with first edition. Um, the game got so complex, it made the barrier of entry really challenging. And we've all been there when we've tried a new game and a new player goes, okay, and I do this and I do this and I do this. And you just sit there going, oh. Yeah. Uh, like, Wait, all can of you explain that again? Like, uh, yeah. <laughs> or, or, or you just go, okay, I'm just going to sit down and let you keep going, do your own thing. I'm just going to... And you lose interest in the game, and that kind of sucks. Yeah. Now, I don't think R2 is egregiously too powerful, and thankfully, yes, we can alter the point so complicated things don't have to be meta-relevant. Hmm. But what I'm saying is they don't have to be this complex to start off with. I think what happened, and I'm assuming here, um, hmm. this started with a simple design and got more complicated as they were testing it. Like, I can see... Uh, you can spend a charge uh, to remove a red token. Or you can just spend a shield to remove a red token with like no caps on it. Yeah. And then if you have no shield, you can spend two charges to recover a shield. That's it. But then yeah. they, had to, they had to add on the charge in the first one and the deplete in the second one because like, oh, they tested it and it was just too powerful. Mm. And, and they tested and they tested and they tested. And they go, okay, we've got to cut this balance now. Ah, but now it's too yeah. complicated. Ah, oh, too, too late. Let's just ship it. I think that's that's the impression I get here. Because I like that we have two mechanics here, like spending shields to get a, mo a good effect. And then when you have no shields, you're able to get the shields back. That's really cool. Like, the effects are linked. Um, yeah. It, 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 it's mechanically flavorful. It makes sense. I just think it's a couple of degrees too complicated. 
that's where I'm at with this one. Yeah, I think had they left out the deplete token, but then I feel like that's too powerful. I it's don't in, know. It's in there for balance. Yeah. It's in there for balance. I totally get that. I, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I'm i not a big fan of this. Let's move over to the next one because I actually am a big fan of this one. R68, yeah. which is um, Snap's Astromech. While you mm. perform an attack, you may reroll any number of dice, or rather a number of dice, up to the number of friendly ships at range 0 to 3 that also have the defender in their bullseye firing arc. Or rather, have the defender. You don't have to have them in the bullseye firing up, but they do. I like this. It's, it's, um, it's a paragraph of text that you read it and you go, it does that. It does that. Okay. Um, friendly ships get stuff in the bullseye firing arc. As long as you're close to them, you get that many rerolls. It's simple. Um, you can see how it mechanically benefits certain list building techniques. I like this a lot. Now, there is sort of like two caveats, which I don't love. Like, it's got to be close and they've got to be in their bullseye firing arc. But I think that's fine. What do you mean it's going to be close? It's range 0 to 3. Range 0 to 3. Oh, but what I'm saying is, like, they could be on the opposite side of a ship that you're shooting range 2. They're range 2 of it as well, but you don't get the bonus. Which you've got to be careful of. Um, it can happen. It's, you know, not likely. But the idea is, yeah, this likes um, flying in formation, which is what the new Snap and Poe is all about. So this is great. This might actually even be good on Poe, <laughs> which is kind of crazy to think about. Um, yeah, I'd be down for trying this on Poe. It matches the paint scheme of his ship, too. No, the, it matches po, um, Snap's ship. No, no look, at the, look, at, look at the astromech. It's white and orange. Oh, it's like Poe's ship. Yeah, yeah. okay. See? And, and Snap can have R2 and just get confused. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. That's what we're going to do. That's what we're going to do. Yeah, I, I like this. It is passive offensive mods. It um, benefits a certain style of flying, something the FFG is trying to push on the resistance, and I like it. Um, the hmm. power levels all depend on the points. I don't think it'll be like two points, like Predator. I think like four or five points. Because there are situations when it just won't do anything, I hmm. don't think it's going to be crazy points. That's hmm. where I'm at with this one. Yeah. Okie dokes. Let's have a look. We actually have a new talent here, which goes on the X-Wing as well. Let's bring that one up. Backwards Tail Slide. This can also go on T-65 um, and any other X-Wings that decide to make at some stage. T-80... Um, well, we do know that there is the possibility of a T-80 coming out at some stage because the underslung cannon says resistance X-Wing. Mm. It doesn't say T-70. Um, cool. And you have to have your S-4s equipped. I mean, why wouldn't you? But sure. Yeah. Um, while you boost or barrel roll, if your equipped configuration card is closed, yes, your S-4s is closed, uh, you may move through an overlapped obstacle. After you boost a barrel roll through an obstacle, if you're not a range zero of it, in other words, you don't land on it, uh, gain an evade token, which is quite cool. Uh, this is really good with the overdrive thrusters because that allows you to boost and barrel roll with a two-speed maneuver, making this even more doable. Yes, um, but overdrive thrusters is capped at only one, so you can only put it on one ship. Oh, Inside, yes. Like it's the, a... Yeah. It's a yeah. weird mod that Poe happened to have in that cruiser when yeah. they when they ran away. <laughs> it's yeah, it's very unlikely. But yes, only one Poe's special X Wing big rocket thing that goes on the back. It's really mm. cool, you guys. Um yeah, this is really, really interesting. Um Being able to like boost and barrel roll around rocks, it's already um really good for defense, so adding on the extra evade token seems pretty, pretty powerful. Um, I don't think this is a card that we're going to be sort of highly prioritizing. There are obviously already really good talents that go on the X-Wings. Yeah, I think this is like maybe two points. Yeah, something maybe like that. Maybe three. I don't know. Because it does give an evade token, which is pretty good. It's pretty good. Um, it's almost like what uh, Poe had with Debris Gambit. Um, yeah. But Debris Gambit went up in points, I want to say. And I think in general, probably better on the T-70s and T-65s. I mean, they can both boost and bow roll in certain situations. Um, but we like overdrive thrusters and especially like Poe Dameron, that kind of stuff. Um, this seems to me a good fit for Poe Dameron. Um, actually, yeah. before we started recording, I was looking into a specific rules interaction because um, as far as I'm aware, and I might be wrong here, I think this might be the first time 
that we've had the ability to fly through a rock using a boost or a barrel roll and then take another action. Uh, we previously had collision detector, but that's it can't go on like um, a TIE interceptor or a TIE VN or anything that naturally has two actions. Yeah. Where this card can go on something like Poe Dameron or something flying alongside the new Poe Dameron. So you could do a boost or barrel roll and then theoretically take a second action. Now, I did bring up the um, rules and directions here. So when you fly over a rock with a boost or a barrel roll, because a card has allowed you to, you still suffer the effects of that rock. Asteroids, you roll for damage. Uh, debris clouds, you roll for a crit and take a stress, all that kind of stuff. And if you have a look at how all of those different obstacles work, you then skip your perform action step. Um, which you're currently in the middle of in this hypothetical situation. Um, but because you've already taken an action, my understanding is Poe still allows you to take another action. Even though you're skipping a perform action step, you're still triggering that ability. I don't think skipping the perform action step will prevent you from taking the second action. That is what I understand. Um, perhaps FFG will have to put this in an FAQ. But yeah. That's, that's where I land on this rules interaction. I think... If you do this, you will still then be able to perform another action whenever that comes up. I think this is going to be better on old Poe than it would be new Poe. Yes, because old Poe can better use the ability just on himself. Yeah. And I think just using this with um, Poe by himself is going to be better. You don't have to roll on other ships. Uh, yeah. It's really cool, though. <laughs> that's, all, that's all I'm going to say. Um Obviously, it's something that's going to be sought after alongside the overdrive thrusters. It's just about those points and whether those kind of builds are viable. I think, like, Poe just by himself is already quite compelling. Maybe with, like, um, oh, what's the astromech that reduces the difficulty of one and two speeds, R4 or something like that? The one I'm always going on about. Uh, it could be a case of having these two extra cards are just too much for Poe. Uh, but if they're cheap enough, I think this is something to look out for. I think it's pretty pretty legit. I mean, we're not going to be able to fit that kind of stuff in your 4 or build, probably. Um, yeah. yeah, it's very, very interesting. Like, the effect is powerful. Gaining evade tokens when you're already doing defensive maneuvers seems pretty decent. I like this one a lot. I like this one a lot. <laughs> so those are all the things that are new to this article. If you're interested in any of the cards that we haven't spoken about from this article... Uh, you can go back to our old videos when it was all announced in Gen Con, especially things like the Underslung Blaster Cannon. Very, there, very interesting. Actually, it's above, it's above my head. <laughs> I'm uh, sorry to say, Justin. That's right, but all this new stuff, it's very, very interesting. Yeah, do you think awesome. you'll be getting a pack? Yeah, I mean, why not? I've got a bunch of X-Wings and A-Wings already. Just mm. grab it and play around with this kind of stuff. I do like the Resistance. I'm predominantly a scum player myself, but... If I'm going to play a second faction, it's resistance. I, I love flashy, dumb flying. Yeah. I, I, I must say, the paint jobs on these ships do look amazing. Absolutely. And you've got to collect them all. I mean, that's... Yeah. I, I mean, it's Pokemon. Capitalism? <laughs> it's Pokemon. <laughs> it's basically Pokemon. Anyway, stay tuned. We do have some more information to uh, bring out today as well, or over the next day, uh, whenever this video comes out. We have all the points for the current wave that's going to come out tomorrow our time so mm. we will be going through that really soon on the channel as well in the meantime like subscribe all the social media and patreon information is down in the description below thank you to everyone who supports us in patreon it really 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 does mean a lot and me and justin will both catch you in the next video bye